Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel and today we are coming back to a long lost love of mine I feel like and that is DCS World. I know I've been putting out a few hairier videos here and there but I just haven't given this little lady the attention she deserves. For anyone who has not flown DCS World if you are even remotely into uh, aerial combat whether that be air to ground, air to air or just some of the basics such as you know flying the patterns, landing the aircraft, flying them, air to air refueling, carrier landings etc. Um, I highly suggest you guys check out DCS World. It is truly an amazing simulator and has kept my attention for over three years now. Um, I've seen it go through many growing pains and it's really become an absolutely fantastic simulation. With aircraft from the F-14, the F-18C, the F-16, the Aviate B Harrier, the A-10C tank killer that just got updated, going all the way back to World War II aircrafts, P-47, the Spitfire, the uh, BF-109, um, the P-51 Mustang, of course, can't be without it. All full fidelity, study level aircraft. Um, it, guys, it's tons of aircraft coming. We have the Hind coming. We have the Apache, which was uh, teased uh, at the uh, New Year's release. Um, it just is really an amazing simulation. The aircraft carrier is fantastic. I could go on and on. I could really go on. I, I could make this entire video about boasting about DCS, but that's not what I want to do. So, um, anyway, today what we're going to be taking a look at is we're going to be going after a few different mods and add-ons for DCS World. I've done this for Microsoft Flight Simulator, and you guys seem to really enjoy it. And I thought to myself, well, why the heck haven't you done it for DCS World? There are literally hundreds, if not thousands, of mods available for DCS World. Everything from liveries to systems to system changes to aircraft, you name it. Um, so, we're going to take a look at a few of those today. Um, there's going to be some VR uh, impacts, you know, whether it be uh, cockpit updates to make things easier for virtual reality or overall um, simulation adjustments for use in VR, um, specifically to help some of the lower end systems or some of your, you know, creature comforts such as being able to see the screens. And then we're going to be taking a look at some tools and things like that to, you know, that are just generalized for the aircraft. <clears throat> so without further ado, let's go ahead and get started with the video. All right, so the first thing that I've got for you guys here is this tool here. It's DCS World Open Mod Manager. Now, remember, guys, just like with any of my other videos, any tools, mods, etc., you can find the links down in the description below. Um, this is much like we've seen with Add-on Linker for those of you who are using Microsoft Flight Simulator. And honestly, you could use my, you could use the Add-on Linker. It will do the same thing. You just have to change, obviously, the directory on which it's going to create a new profile. But so you're not going to see this when you first launch this for the first time. All of this will be blank. So what you'd want to do is go to File, New, go to Context. Context is basically think of it as a profile. Okay, so this is where you could, for example, set it up for different simulators. So we could go, you know what, here, I'll show you guys. I'm going to show you guys how to do this. I'm going to do it for Microsoft Flight Simulator. You guys will do it for DCS World Open Beta as I've got here. Okay, but I'm going to set one up for Microsoft Flight Simulator. So MSFS 2020. Okay, context location, where do you want to create it? I'm going to keep it in the directory where I have this app installed. So, for example, I'm going to go to, nope, this PC. I'm going to go to applications, applications again, DCS applications, open mod manager. Okay, I'm just going to drop it in there. That way, the profiles are in the same directory as the application itself. Keeps makes it simple for me. I'm going to go next. And then please select the destination folder, the location, as well as the for its title. So this is where we're finding the simulator. So in our case, we're going to go for MSFS again, 2020. And destination folder where mods will be installed. In our case, for Microsoft Flight Simulator, it's going to be um, the packages folder. For DCS World, you would go to your DCS World open beta or stable release directory, as I've got here. So you can see program files, Eagle Dynamics, DCS World open beta. This is the directory that you would set for DCS. For demonstration purposes, I'm going to set mine for, um, what should I call it? Microsoft Flight Simulator. So I want, and actually I'm in the wrong directory. Let's back that up. I would go to C, custom folders. Oh, I already had one there. I didn't even know that. Um, and I'm going to go to packages and community is where I'm going to want that. And I'm going to hit OK. All right, and then you can set a custom library where mods are stored. So this is definitely something I'm going to want. So I'm going to click that. And now I'm going to go and find, again, this PC, applications. And you can see I have a folder for MSFS 2020 mods. I'm going to select that, hit OK. 
Okay, I'm going to hit finish. Now, the custom backup folder, this allows you to create, so what it will do is if it's replacing a file, for example, um, let's say it's a new texture, right? And so DCS has its own textures, but you want to install a, te a different texture. What it will do is grab the original files, pull them out, store them, and put the new ones in. That way, when you uninstall the mod, it puts the original fo folders back in. And if you want to select a specific directory to store those files in, you can. I just leave it at the custom. It's fine for me. Okay, and you can see here are all my mods that I have for FS2020. And to install them, like for example, if I want to install this, I just click here and I hit install. I'm not going to do that because it's already installed through a different mod, through a different tool. And then if I wanted to remove it, I just hit uninstall. And you can also create batches. Okay, if you want it specific, if we wanted to group, for example, we wanted the TBM 930. This is an aircraft. The, actually, it's the one right there on the air, on the wallpaper. That's TBM 930. And it uses the G3000 avionics suite. And I wanted this cockpit uh, livery. Okay, so I could combine those and make a batch. But uh, I'll, I'll display that at a later time. I'm trying to keep this from getting confusing. And so now to show you the next step here. So we install, uninstall, pretty black and white. Make sure that your simulators are not running when you do this, okay? You wanna install whatever mods and add-ons you want, then launch your simulator. If you need to make changes, remove them, etc. Stop your simulator, then uninstall, etc. Okay, but now to show you the advantage here, as I said, I have just set this up for Microsoft Flight Simulator. And if I wanna to switch to DCS World, I just come up here, find my DCS World profile, and boom, here we go. And you can see the green check mark shows mods that I already have installed. Now I can show you guys. So if I want to remove this better trees mod, I can just hit uninstall. Boom, it's gone. Okay, come back in here, throw it back in. All right, and now this is really critical because a lot of mods um, use integrity check. We'll talk about that in just a second. All right, so let's talk about integrity check for a minute here. First thing, integrity check only affects single player or uh, multiplayer, excuse me, does not affect single player. Single player, you can do whatever you want. So it only affects multiplayer. So if we go to the multiplayer screen, this shield up here will determine our integrity check status. So if we mouse over it, you can see we get an integrity check failure. This means that any of these servers that have the green shield, okay, the green shield indicates that a pure client or a client that does pass integrity check um, only... A, a, only they can get in, all right? So if you have a red shield, you can't get into a server with a green shield. Now, you can mouse over it, and it says integrity check, but if you click on it, it'll actually tell you what files are failing integrity check. So as we can see here, um, I would guess these are my displays, and like a F14, I can guarantee what it is. Um, it is a mod that I have installed to make the F14 um, cockpit textures more visible in VR. Okay, and then these are display uh, mods as well that clean up the displays a little bit, make them, and we'll, we'll, you guys will see them actually in a minute. So I would have to remove these in order to continue to fly into one of these servers. But if I'm flying by myself and doing my own thing, I can do whatever I want. And that's why the open mod manager is really critical to have because I can very quickly exit the sim, turn those mods off, and we'll be good to go. Okay, and I'll demonstrate that for you guys real quick. All right, so the first mod on my list here is just a better trees mod. Now this is before the mod, this is the default that you guys are seeing here on the screen. This mod that I'm about to show you guys does not break integrity check, um, it, so it can be used in the multiplayer environment. Um, and it gives a very slight uh, frame rate increase. So here's the mod installed. You can see the textures are a little bit better. Don't mind the stuttering, that's the recording software. That is not what I experienced in the sound. I'm not quite sure what was going on there. Um, but you can see a slight increase in the FPS, nothing too crazy, but it is a little bit better. Um, but I do find the trees just look a little bit more vibrant, a little bit more variant in the uh, texturing on the individual trees. Colors look a little bit better. I'm always looking for things to make the environment look a little bit better, look a little bit neater. I do pay attention to things like that when I'm flying between routes. So anyway, let's move on. Now for the next mod, you're going to see the footage repeat, but I want you guys to pay attention to the displays. Look at the HUD and look at the two MFDs here. As this next mod will increase the clarity, reduces some of the thickness, some of the fuzziness and the blurriness that we see now. A lot of this can be adjusted with the brightness knob but this one still makes it uh, the displays a little bit easier to read so here's the enhanced the enhancement with the mod installed now this mod comes with both the f-18 and the f-16 links will be in the description below for each aircraft um, but I find this significantly easier to use 
um, especially while in VR. Uh, VR is where I noticed the biggest difference. Again, here's the F16 prior to the installation. So here's the default. And then here we'll show you the, um, the mod. And here now you can see the mod installed. Again, look at the HUD. Look down at the, the uh, two MPCDs. You notice that there is some texture and coloring differences between the mod and the default. Um, again, where this really shines is in VR. It does make VR, uh, the VR experience a bit easier on the eyeballs um, as far as reading gauges, ex uh, screens, etc. So anyway, let's go ahead and move on. The next mod on our list is something simple. It's just an F14 afterburner mod. So pay attention to the afterburners here. This is the default again. This is before the mod is installed. So I'll let you guys just sort of see the real, pay attention to the flames, the coloring, and uh, we'll just watch and see how it develops here in just a second. Sorry for the bad camera footage. I have no place in Hollywood, clearly. And now here is with the mod installed. Bit brighter, bit more intense. I find the coloring to be uh, a bit more uh, appealing to the eyes for the cinematic fact. Looks very, very hot at the uh, exhaust nozzles. But anyway, let's go ahead and move on to our next one now. And for our next one, sticking with the F14, guys, pay attention to all your gauges, needles, numbering, etc. Look at the gun rate and um, labeling up there on the top of the upfront controller. And here it is. So with this mod, you can see this is really helpful for VR. Um, it makes everything much easier to see. The font is larger and uh, really improves the VR experience in the F14. And last one on our list today is conformal fuel tanks for the F-16. It is important to remember this mod does break integrity check, but it's very handy in single player. Um, now, um, it does have a slightly less payload than what the external tanks do, but it does give the F-16 a bit of a longer reach. This mod doesn't have any visual aspects. You can't see any changes to the exterior of the aircraft. However, if you go into the cockpit, we will be able to see that there is an increase in fuel capacity. Looking down the fuel gauges, you can see we're down there at about 10,000 gallons. It just dropped below, um, which again is an increase from the default fuel loadout. So one more time, this only works in single player. And that wraps up today's mods, add-ons, and tools for DCS World. There will be many more to come as I keep playing around with these. I love finding these different uh, add-ons and enhancements and checking them out and seeing what value they bring. Um, I've got a few more that are already in testing, uh, and uh, I'll be reviewing with you guys next week. I hope you guys have enjoyed this series. I hope you guys are all doing well with this new year. Let's hope for a better 2021, and uh, I will catch you all in the next one. Take care, guys.